We love to laugh, and as comedians will tell you, even raising a giggle can be hard work. Miriam Reddy is always up to the challenge, not only as a performer, but also as a writer, director, and producer. Michelle met up with him to chat about his approach to life and the art of being funny. It may look like a warehouse, but Michelle was inside a dream factory. I'm on the set of High Rollers, ready to meet actor and comedian Miran Reddy. Now, I'm curious to find out what his role is on this popular production. But shh, they follow me. Miran has risen to fame in front of the camera. But as the executive producer of High Rollers, he keeps his finger on the pulse of the production while remaining out of the limelight. Why can't you just trust me? You pushed me, man. Nice. This conversation is over. Yeah. It's all in your head, Quentin. Uh, Lenny, split the difference just the speed this time. And Carmel, will you slow down your entrance by extra beat? Hey, listen. I think we should go to another set. I don't think we can talk here. Go, cool, go. Cool. Okay, Michelle, I think we can uh, we can talk uh, properly now. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. No problems. <laughs> It's a working set. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Directors, actors, oh, it's crazy, you know. But talking of sets, look at this set. Thanks, man. Um, this is King's Casino. It uh, is owned by the Three King Brothers. It's the world of high rollers. Uh, and thanks for saying that, because we put quite a lot of hard work into making it look like a real casino, you know. Isn't this where the massive heist took place? Yes, this is where the heist happened. And there was like so much stuff that we couldn't do uh, on location. So we brought it here and we shot out that window. Uh, there were squibs, there were uh, bullets flying everywhere. Well, we say bullets flying everywhere, but you know what I'm saying. Um, and yeah, and there were people being shot and it was just pandemonium. And I don't think I've seen stuff on that scale on South African television before, you know. Uh, I'm not standing in anyone's blood, am I? Uh, just one step that way, now you're not. <laughs> now tell me, as an executive producer, that's a shift away from the actor and comedian. What made you go behind the scenes? Uh, look, I've always produced my own work, um, but not on this scale. Um, there are far more elements involved in, in sort of putting a show like this together. And it's ongoing, you know, it's three days a week for the next three years. I've only been used to doing like 13 part series, 26 part series. So it's an ongoing challenge. Every time you feel like you've put out one fire, another one starts. Any particular character in High Rollers that mm, shares some similarities with you? No, none. But I will tell you that I gravitate toward writing for the baddies. I seem to be turning out a lot of story for them. You know, where all the other writers are like, no, what about the other characters? I'm like, no, no, these characters, these ones. <laughs> so listen, um, this is only part of the casino set. Um, there's actually quite a bit, bit more. Will you, shall we, shall we oh, please. Can I show you? Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. So this is the Venus show bar. There's a stage over here for performances to happen and there's a bar and a couple of seats for people to watch. Well, I feel like I need to take my seat and, you know, drink in hand. Yeah, I hope I'm making you feel like a high roller. Michelle took a look around the set, which, if anything, looked too neat and tidy to be a casino night spot. Lighting and actors make all the difference. So, uh, this is the third part of the set, but obviously we've got to take the elevator to get there. To, yeah. Well, it's a massive set. It looks so much bigger than what it is on TV. I suppose it has to, you know, with all the cameras and stuff having to fit in as well. Um, okay, here we go. Are you having me on? <laughs> it's not a real lift. It's it's a set. Look, it's an art department. Linda? Yeah, I'm there. Okay, cool. Close. Oh my word, there's somebody standing there. <laughs> yeah, he's got a pulley. Okay, open, Linda. You see? I would have been none the wiser. Seriously, really? I'm feeling quite foolish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad I fooled you. You're a comedian, so are you often asked to make jokes when people come up to you and go, make me laugh? Yeah, I do all the time, and it's painful. But, you know, like, I devise and I write all my lines. I don't, not really put on a spot. You know, we're stand-up comedians, which is what people think of when they think comedian. You know, they come up with one-liners all the time. And so I get really awkward, and then the people who've asked me to make a joke get very disappointed by me. Were you the funny kid growing up, though? Or what was your childhood like? No, actually, the reason this whole drama thing started was because when I was really young I was like completely introverted and I didn't really have any friends and my parents sent me to drama classes to interact with other children and also to fix my lisp. Um, so that's how it actually started, I was very introverted. As a comedian, where do you find your material? I think at this point I've been doing it for so long, you sort of look at a script and you know how many lines there needs to be before there's a punchline, you need to know how many jokes are in a scene. 
you need to know what the scene's about and then sort of construct jokes around that, you know? So it's difficult to say where my inspiration comes from. It's not like I, like I look at a flower and I go, oh my goodness, I'm so inspired, I'm going to make a joke now. You know, like, it doesn't, it doesn't work that way for me. How did you get your start in the industry? Luke, Rouse and myself, uh, we wrote the pilot for a television show in our first year out of college because we were doing theatre work and we weren't being paid a lot and we were really suffering. And at the end of that year, Joshua, his brother, was studying in LA and he had come back and we had this pilot and Mandela in and Tumi Masamola, who own Black Brain Pictures now. The five of us got together and we shot this pilot, um, which we called Life Out Loud, which eventually turned into City Sesla the following year. It got rejected by SABC a couple of times and then they finally found a, a, a place for it. And I think that was the big break. So you made the choice of creating your own work, not waiting for the call. All Luke, Josh and myself have done has been write and produce our own work. Locally you've worked extensively, but you've also hit the international market. What's that like? We're not doing anything very differently to the international people. The difference is the amount of money. There was one guy who was dedicated to me. Like, I would go out of my trailer <laughs> And then he'd come up to me and he'd be like, do you, are you okay? Do you need anything? And I'd be like, no, no, I'm cool. And then he'd go back, sit down, and continue looking at me. And I was like, dude, surely your job is not just me. Yeah, it was great, but I didn't feel like I've arrived. The, the really hectic stuff was being on set with people like Claire Danes and Rupert Friend and having to deliver. Because everybody thinks, oh, you get the role, now you gotta, it's, you're done. But the, the real work is actually having to stand your own in front of these heavyweight actors, you know, and actually deliver. No doubt you're a busy man, Mirren, but what can we find you doing outside of work? To de-stress, I like to cook. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I quite like go-karting. I'm glad you mentioned go-karting, because you know, we at Mela love to treat our guests. Are you up for a challenge? Uh, look, who am I going up against? Well, myself, of oh, course. I'm all in. Okay, good. I like that, all in. I raise you with my life. With your life. Oh, dude. We bring it dangerous. In. High it's rollers. Dangerous now. You are. You, are, you have now graduated into high rollers. <laughs> Let's get to it. The duel would be settled at a local indoor raceway. So, pistons at dawn. Oh, ho, ho. I can't believe you guys did this. This, this is awesome. <laughs> Team Mela versus the High Rollers, oh, are you ready for it? Why are you pitching this? Okay, fine, fine. Let's do it, but your life was on the line as it's well. It's on. Oh, that there too. Well. Okay, cool. Let's, let's do it. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, Clive, how are you doing? I'm good, and you guys? Good, good. Are you ready for the racing, guys? Thank good. you. The buzz of adrenaline was already mixing with the smell of petrol and oil. The pace of this contest wouldn't match that of Hamilton facing down Rosberg, but for these two drivers, the urge to win was just as strong, even if it wasn't backed up by skill, or nerve, or talent. A glamorous way of doing that, right? I had you. I... Oh, there we go. You see? Good race. I got you. Uh, you need my help as well with that. <laughs> uh, just for the record, I let him win. You are a guest. It's only polite. Oh, okay, okay. I'll for, take the record, it. I'll for the record, for the record. I'll take it. But where to next for you? I think hopefully in the future it'll be a more international sort of market that we're aiming at. But right now, we're just trying to entertain the South African audience. Okay. Well, you know what? Round two. You ready? Oh, oh, oh you see, I can see that Down. look in your eye. I I'm warmed that. up now. No, oh, no, 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 no. You know what you are? You are burnt. <laughs> I got burnt. I'll agree. There we go. Well, next time you see Miran on screen as an actor or comedian, just remember that he's a man of many talents, except maybe go-karting. <laughs>